Welcome to another lesson and today we'll be looking at balancing chemical equations. Alright, so yesterday, right, we looked at the lesson that talked about our types of reactions. So now we're going to take that further in balancing our chemical equation. So before we begin, what exactly is balancing equations? Right? So balancing equation is actually ensuring that our products and our reactants are conserved based on the amount of atoms of each element that is present. So let it explain, right? So we know that on a chemical equation, the left hand side are our reactants. So these are the things that we mix together in order to get a product. So therefore, after the arrow, we get our all products right now we notice that we have any here we have any here we have l cl2 here we have cl here and we have cl there right now these are atoms of different elements right so the amount for each individual atom on our left side needs to add back up to the amount on our right hand side because we are not able to destroy atoms, right? So in a chemical reaction, atoms are not destroyed, right? So the same amount total on our left side has to be the same amount total on your right side. So in balancing equations, we use numbers in front of the compound or the elements to balance off the left and the right side together, right? So if we look at this example, where we have sodium reacting with chlorine to give sodium chloride, right? So we notice that it's Na because all metals, right? So from the periodic table, all metals exist as just their symbol, just to know, right? So if it's magnesium, it's Mg, right? But gases, elements of gases exist as a molecule and a molecule is the two of the same atom, right? So if it's chlorine, it's CO2. If it's oxygen, there would be O2. If it's hydrogen, it's H2, because these are element gases, right? So all element gases exist as a molecule, which is the symbol and two, right? And then we have NaCl, right? So before we balance this equation, this is what we would have, right? But we know that on the left side, we have one Na, right? Because there's no number beside it. So it's one of Na here. And over here, we have one Na as well. So that's balance, right? But on this side, we have two Cl. And on this side, we only had one Cl, right? So we have two here and one there. So that means we need to make this balance with this. So if we put a two, remember only at the front, right? So we put a two here. So that means we're going to have two Cl, but it also changes the Na, right? So it's two Na as well. And remember over here, we only had one. So therefore we need to put a two here to say that it's two Na here, two Na here, two Cl here, two Cl there. And that is how we balance the chemical equation, right? Now, you might be curious about these symbols at the bottom, right? So those symbols are known as your state sim symbols, right? So your state symbol tells us or tell the reader that these are the, the state in which these chemicals are in this reaction. So the state symbols are S, which represents it's in a solid state, right? L represents that it is a liquid state, right? G represents it is in a gas. And we have the AQ, which is, and we have AQ, which means aqueous, right? Now, aqueous represents solutions. So anything that is dissolved in water, it's of aqueous state. So for calcium chloride, 
right, which is just table salt, right, in this case, we're going to not get the crystals of calcium chloride, we're going to get a liquid form. And because salt is able to be dissolved in water, it's actually aqueous, right? Liquid state is if we have the compound like water, right? Water can exist in a liquid state, right? Ethanol, right? So those things exist as liquid. Gases means that we get fumes coming out. Right? So the fumes that come out are in a liquid uh, gaseous state and solid, right? So solids normally go for metals, right? So if it exists, remember, metals exist as just their symbol, just their chemical symbols, right? So those are metals as well as you have some compounds that are in a solid state, right? And I'll give the information in our description to give you some information of which type of elements can exist or compounds can exist as just in their solid state. All right. So we're going to look now at balancing some other equations to ensure that we get the balancing of equations on par. All right. So in this case, we have iron bromide reacting with sulfuric acid. Right. So remember yesterday's lesson, we looked at type of reaction. So in this type, right, because we have a metal, non-metal, metal, non-metal, non then that means it's a double displacement, right? Because each metal has something bonded to it before. So therefore, this Fe will take the place of the, the H, right? And the H now takes the place of the Fe. So it would be Fe. 2 SO4 bracket 3 plus the H now takes the place of the Fe, so we get HBr, which is hydrogen bromide. All right, so just to note, guys, if you need a next lesson to tell you how we get these compounds, you can just leave a comment below and I'll do a video on creating compounds ionic compounds, right? So that's our complete equation here. So now let's go to balancing, right? So in balancing, I normally like to start, when you're just learning how to balance, I like to start by just doing a simple table, right? And in this table, we have our atoms, we have the left side, and we have the, the right side. So first thing, we're listing all the atoms that's in this reaction, right? So we just can focus on one side because the same atoms here are the same ones over there, right? So the first atom is Fe, the next atom is Br, the next one is H, next one is S, and the final one is O, right? So those are our atoms. So now we're just adding up together the atoms from the left and the right. So Fe, we only have one Fe on the left. All right, and over here we have, this two goes for the Fe here, so that's two Fe's. A Br, we have three Br's here. All right, and over here we have only one. And then H, we have two H's here. And for here, we only have one S. We have one S here. And over here, we have this three because it's bracketed, goes for the S and the O. So it's three times one, which is three. And for the O, we have four on the left. And it's four and the three. So four times three, 12. All right. So now we have our listed here. Now, the next thing is we start with our metals. So that's the first thing. We start balancing our metals first, right? So we start with iron, right? So we know we have two here and one over here. So we're getting a number that can multiply to give us the other one. 
So we're only looking at multiplication, right? So if we want to get 2 and we have 1, then that means we can multiply this side by 2, right? To get the 2. So that means this number that we're multiplying by, we're going to put it in front, remember, only in front, in front, that compound that has the Fe, right? So now we have two Fe's, right? So these two now are balanced, right? But this now changes Br, so it's two, and we already have three here, so two times three becomes six, all right? So that's that for that one, right? And then we move to hydrogen, right? So we, that's the only metal here. Then we move to hydrogen. So we have two on this side, right, left side, and one on the right side. So in that case, again, we can multiply this by two to give us two. So on the right side, where hydrogen is, we're going to put a two there, right? That gives us a balance for hydrogen. But it changes the Br over here to 2 times 1, which is 2. So Br over there is 2. Alright. Now, let's go to S, right? Or we can go to Br. So let's go to Br. So we have 2 and a 3 here. So that means... 6, sorry, and a 3. So that means if we need to make 2 become 6, we multiply by 3, right? Now, this is where it kind can get complicated, right? So remember where BR was on the right side? We already applied a 2 there. So we're not going to erase this 2 to put 3. We're going to actually multiply that 2 by the 3 because we already had the 2 there by the 3 to get 6, right? So we have the 6BR there, and it now changes H, right? So now we're going to have to erase this because we're not finished with H because it's going to change H to a 6, right? So BR now is balanced, right? So it changes H to 6, so that means we have to change this H now. So we're going back to the H. So again, we multiply this by, by 3, right? Now, because the H here, 2 is right here, we can just put the, two, the 3 in front here. So 3 times 2 give us the 6, right? And now this 3 changes this S from 1 to 3. Right? And now we notice that the S is balanced, right? And this 3 times the 4 here gives us 12. So now we know that this also is balanced, right? So this is how we would balance this specific equation, right? So let's do another one. All right. So in this equation, we have CH compound reacting with oxide or oxygen gas. So remember from types of reaction, right? This is a compound that contains CH, right? Being reacted with oxygen gives us, always gives us carbon dioxide and, and water, right? So in this again, we identify our atoms here, which are smaller this time. So we have a C, a H, and O, right? So on the left-hand side here, C is 2. And on the right-hand side, C there is just 1 C, right? On this side, H is 4. And on this side, H is 2. And then oxygen here is 2. And on this side, both compounds have oxygen, right? So we have 2 oxygen here plus one oxygen there, so it is three, all right? So now let's go. So remember we start with metals first. There is no metal here. And then we move to hydrogen, right? So after metals come hydrogen, then our non-metals, right? So 
hydrogen is there, we have 4 and 2, alright, so we need this 2 to become 4, alright, so therefore we can multiply this by 2 to give us 4, alright, so on the right hand side we're going to put a 2 there, so 2 times 2, 4, but it also changes oxygen, alright, so 2 times 1 is 2, plus this 2 here, so that gives us 4 oxygen. Alright, so now hydrogen is balanced. Alright, now we can go to carbon or oxygen, right? Because both are classified as being non-metals here. But well, let's go with carbon since it's at the top. So we have 2 and a 1, so therefore we multiply this number by 2, right? So therefore on the right side where carbon is, we put a, a 2 there, right? So 2 times 1 gives us 2. 2 now changes the oxygen, right? So it's 2 times 2, which is 4, plus 2 times 1, 2. So 4 and 2 gives us 6 oxygen. Alright? And then finally now, oxygen. So we have 2 and a 6. So therefore, to make 2 become 6, we multiply by 3. Alright? So we're on the left hand side where oxygen is, we put a 3. So 3 times 2, 6. Alright. So everything here is balanced now. Alright. And that's how we'll do it. Alright. So guys, thanks very much for watching. I'll leave some examples or some questions below. And you can complete and let me know in comments what you got for balancing these equations. Alright, thank you very much guys for watching today and see you next time.